Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely good evening from here in Delhi and hope as always each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits and a lovely good evening to Srinivasan Rajagopalan. Uh, I read your message, it was very, and I must admit it, I was overwhelmed by it and thank you so much for your that lovely message which I went through. Uh, Anyway, now in this particular session, as I told today, we are going to start internal reconstruction. What exactly inter internal reconstruction is, we will come to that definitely, but before that actually, it is also a subtopic of your India's 103, correct? And if you are going to actually have a look over the last three attempt papers, in each attempt what we found, question is striking from this particular topic with great regularity. And question encompasses nearly 7 marks to what we call 14 marks. Since last three attempts, every year there is a question from internal reconstruction. So that is why you cannot actually afford to ignore this particular chapter. Correct? If all are present, then kindly let me know am I audible and audible clearly or not. Just for that and in the meantime, I am just waiting for the green signal for those students who are joining us through SAS system. Correct? Just one minute I would take and then we can start this particular chapter. In Notes have already been actually uh, uploaded so kindly download the same and uh, yes in the meantime now green signal is also on so lovely good evening to those who have just joined us through SAS system. So we are starting today internal reconstruction and many among us actually take this particular lecture, uh, chapter very lightly thinking that and many are among what we call this particular notion that uh, it is quite unimportant. Nothing like that. Uh, I've already told you since last three attempt papers, if you are going to look at, then definitely you will find that there is a question from this particular chapter. If voice is clear, thank you very much, Srinivasan. Now we can start internal reconstruction. Although these are revisionary sessions. Uh, these are revisionary sessions, but in spite of that, as you know, actually, we are simply not taking them as actually revisionary session. On our part, we are trying our level best effort to give you a conceptual understanding before we move into the intricacies of this particular chapter. Let's come straight to the point. And today, uh, actually, you will have to write a, uh, write a lot in case if you intend to, if you want to have a good grasping of this particular chapter. Even though some of you are might have joined other classes and some of those who might have subscribed to our courses but in spite of that actually I would look you to I would like you to actually pay a little bit of attention internal reconstruction what we mean by internal reconstruction in order to come over to this particular point let's have a look over here I'm checking the light actually okay now presume that this is the balance sheet of a particular concern and this balance sheet is given to you as on 31st of 3 2027 Another assumption we presume that the company we are talking about, let us say we are talking about the concern, this concern is let us say F1 Limited. The name of this concern is F1 Limited and as you can see the balance sheet of this particular concern is given to you. Number one, we presume that this particular concern is in the trade since a pretty long period of time. Let us say since what we call 8-9 years, this particular concern is in the trade. It is operating since last 8 or 9 years, correct? Now. Balance sheet as a 31st of 3, 2027 is given. Now, if we are going to scan the balance sheet of this particular company, what we find actually, see here, first of all, first item given to us under equity share capital, equity share capital 10,000 into 100, no problem, 10% preference share capital, as you can see, 5,000 shares of 100 each, 5 lakh. Besides that, there is an item by the name of other equity and other equity we have written profit and loss account. But profit and loss account, as you are watching it, actually it's a negative balance. Correct? Number one. Then besides that, we have non-current liability in the form of 10% debentures of ended each worth rupees 15 lakh, then current liability. Now towards the asset side, what we find it under property plant and equipment, plant and machinery is written. Although in the outer column we have written 10 lakh, but its market value is just about 8 lakh. If the market value is 8 lakh and we are still putting that particular figure at 10 lakh in the balance sheet, we may say this 10 lakh is overvalued by rupees 2 lakh. Correct? This 10 lakh figure which this particular entity has presented, we may say actually in accounting jargon that it is overvalued by rupees 2 lakh. Is it clear to you? It is overvalued by rupees 2 lakh. 
Similar is the case with financial asset investment. As you can see, investment in the outer column is being presented by this particular concern at rupees 5 lakh, whereas the market value happens to be just rupees 4 lakh. So again, it is a case of overvalued by rupees 1 lakh. So far, we have noticed three items. One, profit and loss account, correct, where I have tick marked, and then another two items, that is what we call plant and machinery and investment. And what we saw here, that these are overvalued. Besides that, there is another category under the non-current asset, we write other non-current asset, other non-current asset. And many among us actually do not know what we mean by other non-current asset. Generally, this, this category includes what we call your expenses, better known as miscellaneous expenses or deferred expenditure like preliminary expenses, underwriting commission, discount on debentures and all. So, the presence of these items, that means here also I put up a mark, correct, I have already put marks on profit or loss account, plant and machinery, investment, besides that now preliminary expense underwriting commission, discount on debenture. I've already told you these are, these can be collaboratively called as deferred expenditure, deferred expenditure, deferred expenditure. So, presuming that you are a potential investor or for that distance you are a financial institution, correct? or for, a, for that extent, a banking institution. You are scanning the balance sheet of this particular company, which is in the operation since a pretty long period of time, correct? After having gone through the balance sheet, immediate, immediate conclusion will be, because of these items which I have ticked marked, correct? Your immediate conclusion will be, as somebody told among you, that the position of the company is impaired and more specifically I would say the position of the financial position of the company is extremely weak and company is passing through a phase of financial crisis. Company is passing through a phase of financial crisis. My immediate conclusion will be number one. Second conclusion my, will be the financial position of the company is very weak. Put in nutshell, that means company is not earning sufficient amount of profits. You must understand that these items which I have ticked marked over here, the first item was accumulated loss. This is profit or loss account debit balance and normally we write it under other equity as you know. Besides that, there are some overvalued item. Plant and machinery is overvalued by rupees 2 lakh. Investment is overvalued by rupees actually 1 lakh. So besides accumulated losses, there are some overvalued items. And in the balance sheet of this particular company, there are deferred expenditure. The presence of such items, I have also written for you already. Just have a look over here. Correct? I have written here, symptoms of weak financial position. When we went through the balance sheet of this particular concern, we concluded that the financial position of the company is weak. So, what were the symptoms which led us to such a conclusion? Symptoms of weak financial position is presence of items like overvalued items. As we saw in this particular case, plant and machinery and investments are overvalued by rupees 2 lakh and 1 lakh respectively. Besides, another symptom is accumulated lot losses. We also saw that in this particular company, there is debit balance or profit or loss account. And besides that, there are some deferred expenditure. Example, preliminary expenses, underwriting commission, discount on debenture, miscellaneous expenses, share selling expense. Actually, share selling expense uh, or commission is nothing but underwriting commission. So when the balance sheet or the financial position of a particular company contains such item, that actually provides very wrong impression regarding the affairs of the company and that is considered as a sort of blot on the image of the company. Correct? And if, and if the financial statements of this particular company would be released after some time, then it will lead to horrendous consequences. It will lead to horrendous consequences. As I told you a moment, for example, suppose tomorrow or after some time, the balance sheet or the financial statement of this particular company is released, then there will be horrendous consequences, as I say. What will be those horrendous consequences? Prominent among them is that no financial institution would like to lend any money to this particular company. And potential investors would shy themselves off from investing their hard and money into this particular concern. Correct? Similarly, as I told you, any financial institution will definitely refrain himself or itself rather into what we call providing any loan to this particular concern. And when such a, when such a scenario would unfold, it means the survival of the company would be endangered. And there are, more likely than not, chances are there that ultimately company will move into the final phase, that is liquidation. 
So that is the problem. When the balance sheet of a particular concern contains number one, overvalued item, number two, what we call accumulated losses, and number three, deferred expend expenditure in very high quantity, correct? That could bring, as I told you, disastrous consequences for the company. So that is why it becomes all the more necessary that these items must be written off at the earliest, at the earliest. And the scheme which, the, in, which an entity actually adopts to write off these items is known as scheme of internal reconstruction. I hope the scheme of internal reconstruction is absolutely clear to you now. Now the next question is how this particular scheme is adopted. Once the directors of the company would find that our financial state, it's our financial statement containing actually lots of such items, then quite obviously they would become very worried and definitely they would take some step somehow to eradicate such items from the balance sheet. Correct? So the scheme, as I told you, which is adopted for such a purpose is known as scheme of internal reconstruction. Now, what is the scheme of internal reconstruction? We know. Now, how this scheme is implemented, that, that is the another question. So, under this particular scheme, what the directors are going to do? Under this particular scheme, implementation. Under this particular scheme, the directors of the company, what they are going to do, just pay attention, implementation. How the scheme of internal reconstruction is implemented. Under this particular scheme, directors are going to actually make a request to all those contributories. Contributories means those persons or institutions who have invested into the entity. For instance, an entity actually receives money by way of what we call equity share capital as we know and company also receives what we call through issuance of preference shares and then company may actually borrow the funds in the form by issue of bonds or debentures or etc. So, in order to implement the scheme, what the entity is going to do, they are going to hold down a meeting with the equity shareholders, with the preference shareholders, with the what we call long-term debt providers. It could be what we call lenders, it could be debenture holders, etc. And under the scheme, company is going to ask these parties to waive a part, waive. We are going to use this particular word so often in this particular chapter, waive. Waive means to remit. Waive is a sort of equivalent to forego. So we are going to actually ask these parties to waive a part of their contribution or remit a part of their contribution, correct? For example, in this particular case, we have equity share capital to the tune of rupees 10 lakh. So we will ask the equity shareholder kindly waive rupees 2 lakh, 3 lakh and so on. So what directors are going to do, they are going to make a request to the various parties to waive a part of their amount. So whatever amount these parties would waive, the, that particular amount will ultimately be posted to uh, an account that is known as reconstruction account. It is known as reconstruction account and also known as capital reduction account. Whatever amount will be waived, that amount will be posted to an account that is known as reconstruction account or what we call capital reduction account. Now, total amount which will get accumulated in this particular account, total amount which will get accumulated in this particular account will then be used in writing of what we call these blots of the company that mean overvalued item, debit balance of profit and loss account known as accumulated loss and then also the deferred expenditure. So this is particular the scheme. The point here is that it is easier said, it is easier said than done. It is not easy to persuade the parties to waive a part of their capital. Correct? For example, presume there are equity shareholder we need not require to presume in our balance sheet we have 10,000 equity shares. Correct? 10,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each. Now let us say directors are having a meeting with the equity shareholders and director ask the equity shareholders our equity shareholders are worth rupees 10 lakh. Correct? And let us say directors are telling to the equity shareholders we are passing through a final financial crisis, financial crunch. And chances are there, if you are not going to actually give us your cooperation, chances are there that our concern might ultimately get into liquidation. So, kindly actually cooperate us. So, directors of the company ask the equity shareholder to waive a part of their amount. Let us say directors ask the equity shareholder to waive at the rate of rupees 70 per share. 70 per share. What does it mean? That means directors are telling to the equity shareholders that you haven't paid us at the rate of 100, 
टेन लैख रुपीज यू हैव पेड अस ओनली टेन थाउजेंड इन टू थर्टी डायरेक्टर्स आर टेलिंग टू द इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स दैट यू हैवन पेड अस एट द रेट ऑफ थर्टी यू हैव पेड अस एट द रेट ऑफ थर्टी परज्यूम दिस सपोज सपोज यू हैव परचेज वन थाउजेंड शेयर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कंपनी एट द रेट ऑफ रुपीज हंड्रेड एंड यू हैव एक्चुअली गिवन वन लैख रुपीज टू दैट एंटिटी नाउ द डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ द कंपनी कंपनी इज आर टेलिंग यू kindly wave wave means forego kindly wave or remit actually at the rate of 70 that mean directors are telling you forget this amount 70000 you presume that you haven't given us rupees 1 lakh you have given us only at the rate of 30 would you agree to this proposal would you agree to this proposal suppose suppose mr a is there correct he has given to mr b rupees 1 lakh correct in a civil society mr a has given 1 lakh to mr b and tomorrow and tomorrow mr b tells mr a mr b is the borrower a is the lender now mr b tells to mr a you presume that you have not given me 1 lakh you have given me only 30000 what will happen ultimately from one side there will be an ambulance and from the other side there will be police are you getting my point or not this will lead to chaos almost so now my point is that here when the directors of the company are telling to the shareholders that forget forget you forget that you have paid us on 10000 shares at the rate of 100 you presume you have paid at the rate of 30 would any sane, sane person what is salt would accept such a proposal it's a, it's a very brutal proposal unkind one correct would you agree to it suppose you are the shareholder let me know of you let me know of you kindly let me know of you so that i come to know how many students are present or not those who are not present will not be given access to the later on classes remember one thing we are noticing down the names of the student who are continuously attending the classes yes now we have become a little bit stern in this particular regard yes kindly let me know if suppose suppose i am the director of the company and you are the shareholders of this particular entity if i'm putting up such a such a proposal before you would you agree to it without any protest or without any chaos would you agree to it should i presume your silence uh, silence as yes would you accept this proposal on the face value the point you need to understand is that although this proposal is very cruel one very brutal one as i told you but in spite of that you will be surprised to see that equity shareholders are going to accept it without any protest without any protest you won't agree as you told you are going to vote against it definitely but let me tell you the answer the answer is actually that answer is that you will be surprised to know that whenever directors in order to implement the scheme are going to put such an unjustifiable proposal before the equity shareholder in spite of that in spite of that they will have to accept it without any protest and without any chaos and without any argument is it clear to you or not now the next question is why why they will have to put up such a silence in spite of being met with such unjustifiable proposal the reason being is that actually equity shareholder is a party which will not have any alternative for example is suppose equity shareholders are going to vote against it for example as sir inwasan told that you are going to vote against it that mean if equity shareholder will not agree to it what will happen this scheme of internal reconstruction cannot be what we called uh, cannot be materialized it won't take place if the equity shareholder are going to protest against it now if the scheme of internal reconstruction scheme will not take place what will happen ultimately company will move into liquidation if company will move into liquidation then chances of recovery of your 10 lakh will become almost zero that is the problem if you are going to protest you are going to lose your entire amount because when a company undergoes into liquidation chances of recovery of money of the equity shareholder are absolutely slim or next to impossible but if you are going to if but if you are going to accept this unjustifiable proposal even though you are quite reluctant but if you are going to if you are going to actually accept this particular proposal on the face value that at least you can live in the hope that 
perhaps in future chances will become uh, chances are there that we might be able to recover some amount so it is better to keep silence here rather than what we call become aggressive and what we call protest this. So that is the reason actually because problem is that I have seen whenever in the question such lines comes before the student that share value of the equity shareholder has been converted from 100 to actually 30. Now a student actually always think of this particular fact how it is possible. So I have given you the reason that is the reason actually I am doing a little bit of conceptual study in the initial stages in spite of the fact that these are revisions sessions is it clear to you or not I hope now it is it should be absolutely clear that why equity shareholder will become willing to actually or should I say should accept this particular proposal without any protest in fact in order to just for your knowledge sake whenever the scheme of internal reconstruction is adopted honestly speaking even though directors call upon the equity shareholder to come and join the meeting they don't do because they know actually that they don't have the, any alternative they will have to accept the proposal at any cost so in this case if suppose equity shareholder accept this and we presume that they will have to accept it then company will have to pass this entry equity share capital account debit old equity share will be cancelled and whatever amount they have waived they have remit there is no word remitted whatever they have remit and whatever amount they have waived will be transferred to an account as I told you reconstruction account and this 10,030 will be their new equity share capital so old equity shareholders old equity share will be cancelled and new equity share capital will be now 10,000 into 30. Similarly directors are going to put up a request before the preference shareholder presume that there are 10% preference shares of the company and there are 5,000 preference share and one share is of rupees 100 total amount is 5 lakh and let us say directors of the company tell to the preference shareholder we are reducing your share from 100 to 80 we are reducing your share from 100 to 80 that means they are indirectly telling to the preference shareholder that kindly waive actually at the rate of 20 per share actually the in case of preference shareholder directors are not going to waive a very high amount that they are simply waiving 20 rupees and they are telling their new preference share capital will be of rupees 80 but in spite of that in practical life preference shareholder may not cooperate as easily as the equip as the cooperation director would be able to seek from the equity shareholder because from the equity shareholder we are not going to have any protest simply because of the fact that they are bereft of any alternative that's the reason but preference shareholder know very well that even though even though if the company would get liquidated they stand on a safer ground and more than likely chances are there that they will be able to get back their money so that is the reason we are not going to get cooperation of the preference shareholder so easily so in order to lure the preference shareholder to get into the scheme we put up a sort of bait before them we put up a sort of bait b-a-i-t bait before them what we call bait in hindi uh, that is what i am saying so they are going to put up a bait before the preference shareholder correct and the bait means they are, they are going to give them a sort of what we call lurement. Lurement ka matlab lalas dena. Correct? So they will tell the preference shareholder kindly cooperate us. We are your rate of dividend at this particular moment is, moment is 10%. Now we are increasing it to 15%. So this way around they will try to actually persuade the preference shareholder to come into the scheme and kindly show their cooperation. So this is and if the preference shareholder would agree to it in that case we may say that this much amount has been waived by the preference shareholder. It will be transferred to reconstruction this will become new preference share capital so as i told you similar is the case with respect to debenture holder wherein we, we are going to lure them by increasing their rate of interest to make them come into the scheme and so that they can actually waive a part of their amount as i told you whatever amount whatever amount is waived ultimately it will be transferred to the what we call reconstruction account now whatever amount will get accumulated in the reconstruction account then we will use it in writing of the overvalued item in writing of the accumulated losses and of course uh, what we call our deferred expenditure let us say amount accumulated in reconstruction is 10 lakh and after writing off all these items let us say all these items are worth rupees 9 lakh after writing off accumulated loss deferred expenditure and what we call overvalued items so we are left we, we are left off with rupees 1 lakh if we are going to left off with something it will be transferred to an account known as capital reserve account because it is a capital gain uh, so many times i have already told you 
कैपिटल नेचर गेन इज वन विच इज नॉट ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ सेल ऑफ सर्विसेज और सेल ऑफ गुड्स इज ए क्लियरटिव चांसेज आर ऑल्सो देयर इन रेयर on a rare occasion it may also happen for example let us say you, there are 9 lakh there are 9 lakh worth of items which we need to write off let us say overvalued portion accumulated losses and a deferred expenditure all in order they are worth rupees 9 lakh and presume that after the adoption of the scheme balance accumulated in the reconstruction account is 8 lakh obviously in this case there won't be any capital reserve If such a scenario would unfold before you, under such situation, then what you are going to do under such situations, you are going to utilize what we call your general reserve or reserve fund or any provision or any provision which is appearing in the balance sheet to meet the shortfall. Honestly speaking, because it is a case of internal reconstruction, if there is a shortfall, I told you you can meet it from any general reserve or reserve fund or any provision. actually chances are there that you won't be having any general reserve or reserve fund because company is already passing through a phase of financial crisis so kindly in that particular case take this shortfall amount from particular provision you can utilize provision for tax also you can also take what we call balance from provision for doubtful debts so in that case you will have to use the what we call provision is it clear to you this is a scenario which we are going to face under this particular chapter I hope now it has become little bit clearer to you what exactly is the scheme of internal reconstruction and how it is adopted. Now we come straight to the point. Kindly open down your notes. Correct. As always, we always start from the crunch and ultimately we move into the uh, what we call higher uh, higher stretches of this particular chapter. Now, first question is quite basic one, just to make you acquaint with actually what exactly is the accounting process. This is the balance sheet of a particular company on 31st of 3, 2007. That means under the scheme of internal reconstruction, whenever you are going to read the question, your focus should be actually to note down such items as I told you, overvalued item, deferred expenditure, and accumulated losses. In this particular case, company is having 20,000 equity shares of 10 each, 2 lakh. Besides that, company is also having 10% preference shares of 100 is 50. Now, this is the item of what we call relevancy to us because it's a negative item profit and loss account. Ultimately, this item will have to be written off. Is it clear to you? Then we come across some items like 7% debenture, trade creditors, and bills payable. Total of the balance sheet is 5 lakh. Besides that, towards the asset side, we find there is property, plant, and equipment. Under it, we find tangible fixed asset. Building is there, plant and machinery is there, patent is also there. Then stock is there, and debtors is also there. On the asset side, we do not come across in this particular case any what we call deferred expenditure. Correct. With a view to reconstruct the company, it is proposed to. reduce equity share by 9 each now equity share capital in the balance sheet is worth rupees 2 lakh 20000 shares of 10 each and equity share capital is being reduced by 9 rupees that mean equity shareholders are being asked to waive at the rate of 9 per share so your entry will be how you are going to pass the entry your entry will be equity share capital account debit first of all write your existing equity share capital you will debit it it means you are cancelling the existing equity share capital your existing equity share capital is cancelled now what is your new equity share capital because equity share capital face value has been reduced from 9 to 1 so that mean new equity Equity share capital will be only rupees twenty thousand, twenty thousand into one. Now, whatever amount has been waived, equity share capital has been reduced by nine rupees. So, this will be the amount which you are going to credit it to re reconstruction account or capital reduction account. Twenty thousand into nine, that will be equal to one lakh eighty thousand. Is it clear to you? Then question states that ten percent preference share by forty each. That means preference share capital has been reduced by forty each. First of all, note down the existing amount of preference share capital. As you can see, ten percent preference share capital is given in the question, and total amount is fifty thousand. Fifty thousand divided by hundred. It means there are five hundred preference share of hundred each, and. In case of preference share, first of all, I will write ten percent preference share capital five hundred into hundred, and amount will be fifty thousand. That means old preference share capital or existing preference share capital has been cancelled. Now I will write here new preference share because preference share capital has been reduced by forty, so that uh, amount which is there now is sixty hundred minus forty. It has been reduced by forty. New preference share capital. 500 into 60. But important point is that uh, just a moment ago I told you, 
in order to get the cooperation from the preference shareholder, generally we put up a bait before them in the form of what we call increased rate of dividend. And here it is written to raise the rate of preference dividend to 13%. That means in order to seek the cooperation of the preference shareholder, we have increased their rate of dividend from 10% to 13%. That is why you will have to write to 13% preference share capital. This is a new preference share capital, 500 into 60, 30,000, and their share and their share have come down by 40. So whatever amount has been waived or remit, that will be put into reconstruction account, 500 into 40, that will be equal to 20,000. Is it clear to you? Then, in this case, it is written 7% deventure by 10%. It means to reduce 7% deventure by 10%. 7% debentures in the balance sheet given to you at rupees 1 lakh. 7% debentures are being reduced by 10%. That means 10% of 1 lakh is 10,000. So now the value of debenture has come down from 1 lakh to 90,000. Is it clear to you? And 10,000 will be taken to reconstruction. But it is here also written that rate of interest on debenture has been raised to 9%. Correct? Actually, in order to get the cooperation of the debenture, we have to put up a sort of what we call lure bank before them. And we have increased their rate of interest from 7% to 9%. So in this particular case, our entry will be 7% debenture account debit. First, we are going to cancel our existing debenture. Then new 9% debenture. Now the value of debenture will be 90,000 because value of debenture has come down by 10,000. So that will be taken to reconstruction account. Is it clear to you or not? If it is clear to you, now it is given in the question, trade creators claim by one third. Actually, under rare circumstances, even sometimes we take the cooperation from the short term creators also. So here, trade creators claim has come down by one third. That means the directors must have put up a request to the trade creators also to actually waive a part of their claim. So trade creators have reduced their claim by one third. So we will write here trade payable account debit 3,30,000 number one trade payable remaining because their claim has come down by down by one third so whatever amount has fallen down by that will be taken to what we call reconstruction and the remaining amount will be taken into the balance sheet later on generally the in the last three attempts what we saw actually the questions were asked from internal reconstruction with great regularity at the same time in none of the question you were asked to prepare the balance sheet only you were asked to actually pass down the entries but anyway now, important point is that, first of all, you will always go through the entire length and breadth of the question. Try to actually note down all the possible gains. For example, in this particular case, whenever equity share capital, preference share capital of four debt stands 10% eventure of uh, creators were reducing, that means some gain is accruing to the company. It is your first task to note down all the possible gain in the question. Is it clear to you? Number one. Number two point while doing while solving the question of internal reconstruction, what you need to take care of? You must understand whether any information is given or not. Any, whether any information is given or not with respect to overvalued items, accumulated losses and deferred expenditure. Whether any information is given or not with respect to overvalued items, accumulated losses and deferred expenditure. If such items are appearing in the balance sheet, you will have to write them off. If such items are appearing in the financial statement, you will have to write them off. For example, in this particular question, there is no overvalued item. So far, so far. Actually, I haven't gone through the entire question yet. First, let me actually go through the entire question, then I will explain this point. Further, in this particular question, it is written, it is written that machinery is reduced to 70,000. Machinery is reduced to 70,000. Plant and machinery is 1,30,000. It is being reduced to 70,000. So by how much by how much we should reduce it? We should reduce it by rupees 60,000. So directly or indirectly, it means machinery is overvalued. So we have to actually bring it down by 60,000. Similarly, question says that to reduce inventory by 10,000, we will reduce the inventory by 10,000. Question also says that create a provision at the rate of 15,000. We are going to create a provision. All intangible assets to be written off. Intangible assets are patent, copyright, trademarks, goodwill, franchise, licenses, etc. In this question, there is one intangible item. Intangible items you are writing off because there is a direction in the question. As per the direction of the question, we have to write it off, so I will write it off. Point which you need to know 
need to understand is that while solving the question of internal reconstruction, first of all, read the directions, read the directions with respect to items which you need to write off. For example, in this question, there is a direction directly or indirectly with respect to machinery, number one, with respect to inventory, then provision and with respect to intangible item. There is a clear direction. So that is why you will have to write them off. Now, there is no information with respect to such items. So point is that with respect to such information, whether there is direction or not, you will have to write them at any cost. Correct. For example, in this particular case, we find that in the balance sheet, there is accumulated, uh, there is accumulated losses, but there are no deferred expenditure. We, we are going to write off accumulated losses at any cost. This is the only point which you need to take care of. So now after having passed, after having passed these four entries, you will simply take into account the credit balances of the reconstruction account. Correct. You will total them up. Their total will be equal to 320,000. Now you are going to utilize this balance in use in what we call writing off all the overvalued items and accumulated losses. So reconstruction account debit. Now reconstruction account will come down because we are utilizing the money to write off. Two plant and machinery. We are going to write off plant and machinery by 60,000 as per the direction of the question Two inventories, two provision and two patents. But there was no direction with respect to accumulated loss, but I will have to write it off. Now in this question, Fortunately or unfortunately, this total is also equal to 320. So there is nil balance. Just a moment ago, I told you in case if there would be any balance, you are going to transfer it to what we call capital reserve. Is it clear to you? Now, then you are going to prepare the balance sheet. Although in the question, I have a doubt whether you will be asked to pass the entries or not. Correct? Because there are lots of questions in the examinations and intentionally they are not asking you to prepare the balance sheet. Although in every year, in every examination of new syllabus, we have seen questions striking from this particular chapter and they are not asking the balance sheet. Anyway, so now equity share capital has been reduced to 20,000 into 120,000. Now there is 13% preference share capital, 500 shares of 60 each, total amount 50. Deventure, instead of 9%, right, 13% deventure. Now there are 13% deventure, but worth rupees 90,000. Correct? There was no change in creditors and bills payable. And as far as asset side is concerned, building will remain at same value, but plant and machinery is now reduced to 70,000. Correct? The stock will come at 70,000 because it has come down by 10,000 and debtors were 55. We have created a provision of 15. So that is why now 41 lakh 10. So it is a very simple topic. But in spite of that, it is not as simple as it may appear on the face value. And that's the actually folly which is committed by the student fraternity. And ultimately in the examination, they have to suffer a lot. So in order to acquaint you with all the possible adjustment, we have taken some conceptual question. Correct. And intentionally, I haven't given solutions to all these things. You must have noted that in your solution, I have written watch for the solution classes. Correct. Although after the class, I will release the the set with the solution also. So kindly pay attention. Following is the summary balance sheet of Turnaround Limited as at 31st of March 2027. Now in this question, first of all, note down the total equity share capital, 2 lakh shares of 10 each. We have 6,008% preference shares of 100 each, 20 lakh and 6 lakh. Importantly, we have to take care of accumulated losses, correct? Then there are 9% eventual trade creditors, bank overdraft, then plant and machinery, furniture and fixtures, patents and copyright. Here you need to take care because your investment is overvalued item by 13,000 difference between 68 and 55. Correct. So the, these are the two items which I will have to write off irrespective of the fact whether any information is available in the question or not regarding them. Is it clear to you? Then. However, in this particular question, basic idea is to acquaint you with the various sort of situations which we may come across while what we were confronting the question. Now, here you are being given one preference shareholder would give up 30 percent of their capital in exchange for allotment of 11 percent venture to them. What will be the entry? Now, in this case, first of all, you note down the amount of preference share capital. Preference share, 6,000 shares of 100 each. So, 8% preference share capital account debit. 8% preference share capital account debit. What was the amount of preference share capital? That is 6,000 shares of 100 each. First, I write here 6,000 into 100. That is equal to 6 lakh. Is it clear to you? 
total amount of preference share capital is equal to 6 lakh. Now, what is written further? Further, it is written, preference shareholder agree to give up. Give up means to forego, to remit, to waive 30% of their claim. So, whatever claim are being waived will be considered as gain. So, I will have to write over here to reconstruction account. So, I am going to write here to reconstruction 30% of their claim. So, I will compute 30% of 6 lakh. Now, what is 30% of 6 lakh? That is equal to 1 lakh 80,000. So, I am going to write here 1 lakh 80,000. Is it clear to you? I am going to write here 1 lakh 80,000. Now, it is given. They have agreed to reduce 30% of their claim in exchange for allotment of 11% deventure. Now, important line here is that now their claims are reduced by 180. That means the remaining amount of preference shareholder is equal to 4,20,000. Remaining amount is 4,20,000. But what preference shareholders are telling, out of 6 lakh, we are ready to willing or we are ready to actually waive 1,80,000. But whatever amount is now remaining, we will exchange it for 11% debenture. That means for the remaining amount, entity will issue 11% debenture account. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you are going to pass the entry if you are going to face such a situation. Is it clear to you or not? That means in the balance sheet, preference share capital will no more exist. And now 11% debenture will come into the balance sheet and reconstruction account will increase by 180. Further, another important transaction here given, debenture holder having a charge on plant and machinery. Debenture holder is having a charge on plant and machinery. As a professional student, you need to have this knowledge that when a company issue, just for your knowledge sake, actually I'm telling this. I know that tomorrow when you are going to appear into the interview, they are going to ask you such questions actually, which you have always neglected. Problem is that. So, in spite of the fact, knowing very well that it's a revisionary session, I'm taking a bit of time actually. Just see here. 9% debenture, it is appearing in the balance sheet. Do you know actually whenever a company issues debenture, Generally, company will not attract the potential investor to invest their money into the debentures of the company. As you know, debentures do not possess the voting rights in the company. So that is why it is very difficult for the company to raise finance through issuance of the debentures. Correct. Generally, potential market will not give a very welcome, what we call, uh, say, great welcome to such issuance. So that is the reason actually, more often than not, when a company would issue the debentures, generally company actually tell to the debenture holders, correct, we are issuing this debenture on a particular security. On a particular security means, as you know, whenever a company would issue the debenture, company will have to mention out very clearly that after what time and what period and at what rate we are going to actually redeem your amount. So company will tell to the debenture holder, we are offering 12 lakh worth of debentures. And you need not require to worry about the repayment. We assure you that we are going to repay your amount after what we call five years. Of course, in the inter alia period, we will provide you interest each year. So at the end of the five year, we'll repay your amount 12 lakh. Correct? And we assure you, and in case, in case if we would default, then you will have the right to sell our what we call secured asset. For example, in this particular case, question has given that debentures have been issued on the security of plant and machinery. What does it mean tomorrow if the company would fall into liquidation? In that particular case, debenture holder will have the right to sell off the property and get recover their amount. This is the point. So now, now in this particular point, it is given, given debenture holders are having a charge on plant and machinery means debenture must have been issued on the security of plant and machinery. Now, question says that would accept plant and machinery in full settlement of their dues. What will be the entry in this particular case? What will be the entry? First of all, note down 9% debenture. Your 9% debenture account as we have just seen is equal to 12 lakh. 9% debentures worth rupees 12 lakh. Now, given in the question that debenture holders are telling to the directors of the company that we are ready to accept plant and machinery. So, indirectly it means in order to discharge the debt of the debentures, directors of the company are offering them plant and machinery and plant and machinery is having a value of 9 lakh and that is given in full settlement. If that is given in full settlement, ultimately there will be a gain to the company to the extent of what we call 3 lakh and this gain will be taken to reconstruction account. Is it clear to you or not? 
Is it clear to you or not? Clear? Now, it is also given inventory equal to 5 lakh in book value will be taken over by trade payables in full settlement of their dues. Now, we can see trade payables. In this particular case, we have seen that trade payables are 5 lakh 92,000. So, trade payable account debit 5 lakh 92,000. This is the entry you are going to write with respect to trade payable 5 lakh 92,000. And you are offering them inventory. You are offering them inventory. In fact, they are willing to take the inventory in full settlement. Now, what is the amount of inventory? Inventory equal to 5 lakh. Although inventory in the balance sheet is given uh, 14 lakh, but out of 14 lakh, 5 lakh worth of inventory has been given to trade creditor in their full settlement. In their full settlement. So, what will be the gain now? The gain will be transferred to reconstruction account. Is it clear to you? 92,000 will be the gain. Actually, basic purpose of this particular question is to acquaint you with the various sort of entries which you may have to tackle. Similarly, now we come across 2.2. Following is the balance sheet of Wana Live More Limited as on 31st or 3, 2027. I hope in the last question, each one of you actually got it. But let me know of that also. If I am going fast, let me actually know. Everything is clear. Islamuddin earlier gave the answer which I gave later. Uh, right, it's a great answer because equity shareholder will accept. This is in the context of that equity shareholder discussion. Correct, your answer is absolutely correct. Great. Everything is clear so far. So we can move further now. The following is the balance sheet of Wana Live More Limited. As usual, we are trying to actually simply get into the groove with respect to all the possible transactions which we may come across so that later on you are not going to have any problem. Or in this particular question, 2.2, first of all, I'm going through the adjustment. All the existing equity share are reduced to 40. I need not require to tell the entry of at least this much. Is it clear to you or not? Each one of you can easily pass this particular entry. Your equity share capital, you can see in the balance sheet is worth rupees 10 lakh. One share is of 100. That means your equity share capital is equal to 10,000 shares of 100 each. 10,000 into 100, that is equal to 10 lakh. So you will have to cancel your old equity share capital account. Old equity share capital is cancelled and written below it, that is reduced to 40 that mean our new equity share capital but don't write the word ever old and new this is your new equity share capital 10,000 into 40 10,000 into 40 will be equal to 4 lakh that mean equity share capital is falling down by actually I should not call it falling down by indirectly it means they have willing they have uh, willingly agreed to actually waive a part of their share capital so to reconstruction account Although under internal reconstruction, we use the word reconstruction and capital reduction simultaneously. Simultaneously. Correct? You must have seen that in the books, whatever books you are following, it is always written that reconstruction account and capital reduction account are one and same thing. So logically, honestly speaking, it is your complete discretion. You can use the word reconstruction account or capital reduction account. But still there is a difference which I am telling you not for the purpose of solution but for the purpose of your int interview. I have seen, you must understand I have been a part of many interview panels of many companies. So that is why I am telling you and cautioning you. Often I have seen a question is raised actually like this one. Could you give us any difference between reconstruction account? First of all, interviewer is going to ask you like this. Have you ever done internal reconstruction chapter in your professional level course? You know anything about internal reconstruction? Obviously, because you are the interviewee, you cannot say no. You will definitely tell, yes, sir, we have gone through it. Well, we would love to have what we call a little bit of difference between reconstruction and capital reduction. At that time, you will start blinking your eyes. Oh, my God. We have always read that reconstruction account and capital reduction account are one and same thing. And now the question is being tossed, tossed up before us that reconstruction capital reduction. What is the difference? Actually, there is a slight difference. If entity is gaining only through reduction in equity, share, reduction in share capital, if company is gaining 
by way of reduction in share capital only then you you have the liberty to use capital reduction account under the scheme of internal reconstruction all the possible gains are accumulated if those gains are coming by way of waivement through the share capital then we have every right to use the capital reduction but if gain is coming from other sources also from shareholders from debenture holders correct etc or from increase in value of assets sometime it may be a possible so in that case logically we should not use reconstruction account we should not use a capital reduction account we should use reconstruction that mean reconstruction is pretty wider than capital reduction that mean capital reduction is a part of reconstruction you may say so so that is why it is always better to use the reconstruction correct because it encompasses what we call capital capital reduction but at your level i am simply giving you liberty because in your books also it has been used synonymously you can use reconstruction or capital reduction anyway this was the first entry second entry says all preference share will be reduced to uh, 60 each now preference share capital so you can easily pass this particular entry also 12 percent preference share capital in the balance sheet you have already seen the 50 lakh one share is of 100 that means there are 50,000 preference shares 50,000 preference shares of 100 each in the examination you must write this way around that is equal to 50 lakh question says that preference shareholders are being reduced by 60 each so that means now the remaining preference shareholder and in fact it will become our remaining preference share capital 50,000 into 40 because it is reducing by actually 60 so I will write here 20 lakh and by whatever amount preference share capital would reduce I need not require to tell you where it will be posted it will be posted to reconstruction account 50,000 into actually 60 so you will be writing here 30 lakhs I have already told you, you will have to actually write a way with today. So, this is how you are, are reduced to 40 each, yes, reducing by 60 each. Now, the main point here is basically to make you acquainted with this particular transaction. Further, it is written rate of interest on debenture is increased to 12%, number one. Then it is written debenture holders surrendered their existing debentures of 100 each. First of all, till up to this particular line, what you have understood. Actually, your debenture in the question are 10% debenture to the extent of 40 lakh. And one debenture is of 100. That means total number of debenture you are having at your disposal will be equal to 40,000. Correct? So 10% debenture account debit. First of all, let me write here 10% debenture account debit. 10% debenture. How many debenture our entity is having? That is 40,000 debenture one debenture is of rupees 100 each that makes it 40 lakh now as per the direction of the question here it is written rate of interest on debenture increased to 12 percent that means now rate of interest on debenture is 12 percent this should not come as a surprise to you especially those who have attended the class right from the beginning the debenture holder surrendered, for, then it is written rate of interest is increased to 12%. Then it is written debenture holder surrendered their existing debentures of 100 each. Surrendered their existing debenture means that is why I have written this entry. 10% debenture account 40,000 into 100 because debenture holder has surrendered their debenture indirectly means company is receiving back their debenture which they, which the company earlier must have issued. So 40,000 into 100 worth of debentures have been surrendered. Now rate of interest on debenture holder has been increased increase and exchange the same for fresh debentures of 70 each for every debenture held by them what does it mean actually company is issuing to to the existing debenture holder new debentures carrying for 12 percent debenture because our debenture holders are surrendering their old debentures and they are exchanging exchanging it with the 12 percent debenture there are 40,000 debenture holder. Each debenture holder will get one new debenture, but the rate of new debenture will be equal to 70. That means now total debenture will be equal to 28 lakh. So ultimately the difference will be credited to reconstruction account. This will be the entry which you will have to pass for this particular transaction. In the balance sheet, 12, 10% debenture will get wiped out. Now, 12% debenture at 28 lakh would figure in the new balance sheet. Reconstruction account will move up by 12 lakh. 
Further here it is written, one of the creditors of the company to whom company owes 20 lakh decides to forego 40% of his claim and he is allotted 30,000 equity shares of 10 each in full settlement of his claim. Now point important is that in this particular case, first of all, note down your creditor, your creditors were worth rupees 50 lakh. Your creditors were worth rupees 50 lakh. Total creditors worth rupees were 50 lakh. Total creditors worth rupees 50 lakh. Out of 50 lakh, there is one creditors. Suppose if I pull out this creditor, this creditor is worth rupees 20 lakh. So indirectly, it means remaining creditors are worth rupees 30 lakhs. Remaining creditors are worth rupees 30 lakh, isn't it or not? Now this creditor decides to forego 40% of his claim. Forego means he is he is willing to waive 8 lakh worth of amount. This amount will be taken to the reconstruction. Now, for the remaining amount, he will be issued equity share capital. He will be issued equity share capital and he will be issued 30,000 equity shares of 40 each because now our equity share is worth rupees 40 each. So your entry will be creditor's account debit. You will debit 20 lakh. Then you will write here two equity share capital and two reconstruction account. Is it clear to you? This is how the entry will be passed. Now, creditors worth 30 lakh will appear in the balance sheet. Equity share capital will move up by 12 lakh and our reconstruction account will also move up by rupees 8 lakh. So these are the entries. This, there is another important entry in this particular question. The taxation liability of the company is settled at 1 lakh 50,000. Now, if you look into the balance sheet, you will find actually under the short term provision, we have written provision for taxation and the amount given is 1 lakh. First of all, question is telling that your liability is increasing. If your liability is increasing, that is considered as a loss. Actually, in accounts, liability can increase through many reasons. For example, you suppose I am going to actually purchase some furniture of any item on credit. Here, two things are happening. Liability is increasing, but at the simultaneously, I'm getting some benefit in the form of asset. It is not a loss. But if my liability is in, is increasing unnecessarily and I'm not getting any benefit out of it, then it is a loss. So that is the reason actually, first of all, you will have to pass this particular entry, reconstruction account debit to income tax payable account, to income tax payable account. Your income tax liability given in the balance sheet is 1 lakh, but below it is stated that income tax liability is to be settled at 1 lakh 50. That means first of all, it is a loss to you. So that is why you will have to debit the reconstruction account, correct? And your liability has gone up by 50,000. That means now your tax liability has moved to 1 lakh 50,000. Now it is given in the question your taxation liability has been settled at 1 lakh 50. Indirectly, it means now you will have to pay it off also. So you will write income tax payable account debit 1 lakh 50,000 because your liability is now 1 lakh 50,000. And you will write here two bank account or cash account, whatever you may like to write. Is it clear to you or not? That means as per this particular entry, now our income tax liability will not appear in the balance sheet. Our cash will get reduced by 150 and reconstruction balance will also get reduced by 50 because reconstruction is debited. Sometimes due to a particular transaction, reconstruction account might get debited. So these are the entries. Actually, basic purpose is to just take care of all the transaction which we may come across while solving the question. 2.3. The following is the balance sheet of one to be good looking limited. Following is the balance sheet of one to be good looking limited. Now in this particular balance sheet, we are given preference shares are to be reduced to fully paid shares of 75 each and equity share are to be reduced to 40 each. You can manage this entry. Now I'm not, not going to write it, correct? Although I will show you the entry if you want to, I know you are not having the solution, correct? Intentionally, I have started now to stop giving the solution because what I am noticing is students are simply taking the solution, not attending the, attending the classes. Actually, do you need solution for this? You can manage this particular entry, isn't it or not? 12,000 preference shares given in the question of 100 is 12 lakh. So 12,000 into 100, 12 lakh. First of all, you are going to write. Now equity share capital has been reduced to 75. 12,000 into 75, 9 lakh. So difference will be credited to reconstruction account. Besides that, question says that equity share reduced to rupees 40 each. Our equity share capital, 24,000 shares of 100 each. First, you are going to debit it, 24,000 into 100. 
and then you are going to credit because it is reduced to 40 each it is written in the question 24,000 into 40 will be equal to 960 and in the reconstruction you will write 24,000 shares into 60 correct this is the entry but basic purpose is to acquaint you with this one debenture holder took over inventories and trade receivable in full satisfaction of their claim although you can manage this particular entry also by yourself i know very well 10% debenture account. Actually, I simply want to be absolutely sure that you all have, whether you have subscribed to our courses or not, you all should have knowledge with respect to every transaction. 10% debenture account, correct? That is equal to 6 lakh. First of all, you are going to write here 6 lakh. As given in the question, debenture holder took over inventories. So you are going to write here inventories. What is the amount of inventory? Correct? then you are going to put it over here in this particular question i haven't given the amount actually asset side anyway whatever amount of inventory is there you write and similarly and trade receivable also they have taken over trade receivable also so this will be the entry trade receivable correct and whatever balance will be there in case correct then you will have to transfer it to reconstruction account this is how you will have to pass the entry for this actually main purpose of this particular question is this one expenses of reconstruction amounted to 5000 now you let me know of the entry what should be the entry in your opinion if suppose question says like suppose there are transaction like this expenses expenses of the reconstruction sometime it may be given penalty charges penalty charges fees and fines penalty charges fees and fines sometime it may be given in the question like this penalty charges fees and fines so what will be your entry first you let me know of that first you let me know of that correct one hour has already gone by allow me to have actually five minutes correct kindly for god's sake so that I can have what we call my tea and after five minutes I'll meet you. We are looking at enough tea break right absolutely after the tea break sometime at this particular age and now the weather in Delhi is slightly becoming a little bit colder. So a little bit, not very high but a little bit. Uh, where are you all from? Kindly write the names of the places also so that I get an idea actually of where I'm reaching out to the student fraternity. Anyway, expenses of reconstruction in, I hope, uh, Upendra Rajpur actually gave the answer reconstruction account debit to cash account you are absolutely right but let me explain it for those actually uh, who want to understand it first of all you need to understand that have you written this item in the balance sheet this item is not written in the balance sheet directly or indirectly you are paying an expense Anna from Kolkata and I would love from others also so that we can we get an idea actually how far we are reaching and how our classes are being actually taken care of. Srinivasa Rajagopalan from Coimbatore. You might be not knowing Coimbatore happens to be my native place. Correct? Anyway, uh, we shifted way back from our generation then to Nanital. Raniket actually it is known as. But originally I hail from Coimbatore. Nice to see you. Anyway. So I know a little bit of uh, the language also, but now I have forgotten, uh, but I love the place. So I was talking about this particular thing, penalty, uh, penalty charges, fees and fines or reconstruction expenses, sometime it would be given. You must understand, first of all, that it is this is something which is not written in the balance sheet. That means this liability is not written in the balance sheet, correct? This... Uh, Right, right, Islamuddin, you are absolutely right, Srinivasan. Yes, you are surprised. Uh, Islamuddin, you are from Delhi. I am also, right now, I am in Delhi. Uh, so, this amount is not written in the balance sheet. If anything which is not written in the balance sheet and you are paying off, then it is considered as a loss. That is why you need to uh, write. Uh, you need to write here. First, your first entry will be expenses, reconstruction expense account debit or penalty charges account debit or fees and fines account debit to bank account. First, you write this one. Although you can write the direct entry, no problem. This should be your first entry. Correct? And this is a loss to you. You must debit it also. Then your entry will be reconstruction account debit to bank account. Actually, reconstruction account debit to expense account. So, 
Once you have understood the entry, then you can write one single entry because expenses, expenses will get cancelled. Ultimately, we will be left off with reconstruction account debit to bank account. Santhana told me, Santhana from Bangalore. I did my entire schooling in Bangalore. 12 years of my life I passed in Bangalore. Correct? So, I know few things about Kannada also. Anyway, it's nice to see and nice to meet you all guys. So my old memories are getting revived. So this was the basic purpose to acquaint you with this particular transaction. I hope so now in case if you face transaction like this, ex reconstruction expenses paid, penalty charges paid, fees and fines paid. In that particular case, your entry will be like this. Is it? And why we pass this entry, that should also be very important because this is not a recorded liability. So anything which is not recorded as liability and is still the cash is getting moved out, in that particular case, it will be considered as a loss and that is why it will have to be written off. Is it clear to you or not? So well, after having gone through this, next one is 2.4. In this particular case, preference share to be written down to 25, I am not going to discuss this. Equity share reduced to 20 each, I am not going to discuss this. Then it is written each class of shares then converted into shares of 100 each. Now because of this, I will have to discuss this. Preference shares written down to 25. First of all, actually in this particular question, you are given authorized, issued, subscribed and paid of capital. So 5000 equity shares of 100 each you are having at this particular moment. So 5,000 into 100, first of all, you write the entry equity share capital account debit 5 lakh. This is exactly how the entry will be. First of all, you will have to write the entry equity share capital account debit 5,000 into 100 that is equal to 5 lakh. Now question says that equity share capital has been written, uh, equity share capital preference share written down to 25, equity share to 20 each. So I will write here two equity share capital account. There were 5,000 shares, so one equity share is now of rupees 20 each. So I will write here 1 lakh. Is it clear to you? 1 lakh. Obviously, there is a gain to us. Earlier, the equity share capital is of 100 each, now reduced to 20 each. Your gain will be equal to 4 lakh. After this, what the question is telling? Question is also telling that each share each class of share will then be converted into rupees 100 each. Actually, now my share after the scheme of internal reconstruction is actually of 20 each. Now question is telling, after this, directors have decided to convert their share into 100 each. That means now you will have to pass another entry, equity share capital account. Now your equity share capital is 5000 into 20. 5000 into 20, first you write this figure, 1 lakh. And now your share is being converted into 100. Actually, it is not a gain. Point is that now your equity, number of your equity share will fall. 1 lakh divided by 100. 1 lakh divided by 100 means now you will have 1000 shares of 100 each. Is it clear to you? So this is the entry you will have to pass with respect to equity share capital. And similarly, you can pass the entry for preference share capital also. Correct? Two entries you will have to pass. First, you will write preference share capital account to new preference to re reconstruction and then you will have to change the preference share capital into 100 also. You can do that. Loan from director to be waived in full. For example, in this particular case, actually no loan is given. Okay, instead of, okay, I will write here some loan amount. Loan from director, let us say loan from director is given as 1 lakh just for the sake of understanding. Loan from director, let us say is 1 lakh. So all you will have to do is simply write here director's loan account debit to reconstruction account. It is a gain to you. If you come across such a situation, you will have to pass this particular entry. Simple, not much to discuss in it. Now, in the, it's a pretty interesting one. This one is interesting one. Uh, 2.5. The balance sheet extract of Com Finance Limited is as follows. Correct. The balance sheet extract of Com Finance Limited is as follows. Authorized issue share capital 12,007%. Authorized and issued capital is given. Presently, you are having 12,000 shares of rupees 50 each. These are preference shares. Correct. And further in the bracket, it is written preference dividend is in area since last five years. However, this amount stands for the amount of share capital. Actually, Areas of preference dividend are always considered as a contingent liability. Correct? It is always given in footnotes. Although, 
company may give it in the balance sheet but the figure of dividend cannot be written in the outer column is it clear to you or not it is a contingent liability preference share can be presented in this manner but as a professional student you need to understand that this is the amount of preference share capital 12000 into 50 besides that in this particular question it is given preference dividend or in area for 5 years first of all you first of all you let me know of in this particular case amount of areas of dividend areas of dividend areas of dividend Santana told me great sir uh, you were great sir you are also you were in Bangalore yes I was in Jalali he stayed a time in Air Force station you must be knowing that actually my father was in Air Force in fact by many members of my family are in Indian Air Force uh, areas of preference dividend areas of preference dividend because my father was in defense so i have almost crisscrossed the entire territory of the nation because of the postings almost after every two three years areas of preference dividend now your preference share capital is seven percent first of all compute seven percent seven percent of six lakh seven percent of six lakh correct and then you multiply it with five years what will be the amount I have forgotten now actually after a long time I am doing this chapter 6 lakh into 7 percent into 5 that comes to 2 lakh 10 thousand if I am not wrong kindly check it also so we may say that preference dividend has been in area since a pretty long period of time almost last 5 years but at time and again I am telling you preference dividend is always considered as a contingent liability it is not it is never ever written one lakh twenty six thousand somebody told amount of preference share is six lakh so seven percent of six lakh is equal to and dividend is in area for five years kindly check it uh, you have taken off anyway it is two lakh ten or whatever it is we are not concerned with the figure i will tell you the concept later now in this case further here it is written Actually, first I would love to actually take this one just to make you understand the point with respect to preference dividend. It, this is the most vital point in this entire chapter. Preference shareholder have agreed, go through this particular line. Preference shareholders have agreed to cancel the areas of dividend. Preference shareholders have agreed to cancel the dividend and to accept for each 50 share and to accept each 50 share four new preference shares of 10 each plus six new equity shares of 2.5 each all credited as fully paid all credited as fully paid in this particular question first of all you need to understand it is given in the question that preference shareholder have agreed to cancel their dividend to cancel their dividend Oh my God, that means it is a loss, it is a gain to us because preference shareholders have agreed to cancel the dividend. Should I presume that it is a gain to you? You let me know of that. You let me know of that whether should I consider it as a gain to the company or not. 2,10,000 worth of preference, div preference dividend was there. Now, preference shareholders are telling that we are ready and willing to cancel our preference dividend. Should I consider it as a gain or not? Should I consider it as a gain or not? Kindly let me know. Apply your mind also. Should I write the entry reconstruct uh, preference dividend account debit? Should I write the entry preference dividend account debit to reconstruction or not? Now, you let me know of that. Should I write this entry or not? If you will be able to understand this particular point, 99.9% chapter is almost over. This is the trickiest. And in all the question which came in the last three attempts, there was a point related to preference dividend. Yes, take your time, no problem. I have lots of time for you at least. Not a gain for company. Sri Ninvasa Raja Kobalan has told that it is a, not a gain to the company. Yes, it is not a gain to the company because it is not a recorded liability. Because this item is not appearing in the balance sheet. If this item is not appearing in the balance sheet, 
correct it means it was not a liability if something which is not a liability is getting cancelled only thing is that you are getting a little bit of relaxation but physically monetarily you are not getting any benefit out of it is it clear to you absolutely right answer no so never ever pass this entry for preference dividend in case preference dividend is cancelled please listen to me completely regarding this if i am taking this much of time even under the revision sessions correct i could have easily finished the chapter simply what we call doing the last two attempt paper and i would have told for the sake of revision that revision is over but this is not the way now my conscience will never ever agree to it correct right prafulla kumar uh, um, Pati Joshi, I hope that I have pronounced it correctly. Yeah, it is not a liability. So you must understand that whenever in the question preference dividend, learn the treatment of preference dividend thoroughly. In this question, entire dividend has been cancelled. Entire dividend has been cancelled. That is why no entry will be passed. Entire dividend has been cancelled in this particular question. Entire dividend cancelled. No entry will be passed. as this is not a recorded liability now suppose now suppose if the question would have stated it this way if the question would have stated it this way that preference shareholders agree to waive if question would have stated it this way that preference shareholder have agreed to waive to waive rupees 2 lakh worth of Rupees ten thousand worth of preference dividend. Worth of preference dividends. If question would have stated this way round, then in that case, what would have been your entry? Then what would have been your entry? <coughs> Obviously, just a moment. I told you, cancellation part will be ignored. With respect to preference dividend, that means no entry for cancellation. You will not pa pass any entry for cancellation. No entry for cancellation of dividend. For cancellation of preference dividend. For cancellation of preference dividend. Cancellation of preference dividend. You are not going to pass any entry. Are you getting my point or not? You are not going to pass any entry. for cancellation of preference dividend however if any portion has to be paid and just remember the point something which is not a liability if you are going to pay it paid then it will be considered as a loss that mean the portion which is to be paid in this case 10000 has been cancelled 10000 rupee has been cancelled portion portion to be paid portion to be paid will be considered as a loss similar to the what we call reconstruction expenses similar to penalty charges similar to fees and fines now you will have to pass the entry and your entry will be like this preference dividend account debit preference dividend account debit to bank account first of all sometime it is given in the question that preference dividend has been paid by way of equity share if it would have been given that way round you could, instead of writing to bank you will write to equity share capital in whatever form you are paying you simply credit it so 2 lakh worth of preference dividend you will have to pay either through cash or through issuance of equity shares and because you have paid this amount but it was not a liability so you will have to actually take it as a loss and you will have to write it off and all the losses must be written off to reconstruction you will have to write two entries in it in fact if the concept is clear then you can write one single entry that's a different matter point is that your concept should be clear is it clear to you i hope the concept with respect to preference dividend should be is absolutely clear now coming back to this particular question in this particular question says preference dividend is cancelled and cancelled in its entirety further it is written and to exit for each 50 share Now we have already seen that in this particular question of a preference share capital accounts there are 6000 shares of 50 each and preference share capital is where the question has gone 7% so 7% cumulative preference share capital account this will be my entry 7% cumulative preference share capital account there are 6000 share at present one share is of rupees 50 each and in the outer column one share is of 50 each no it is written let me see one share how many shares were there 6000 or just wait just wait 
12,000 shares of 50 each. I have written 6,000. Extremely sorry. Extremely sorry. 12,000 shares of 50 each. So that is why you are going to write in the outer column 6 lakh. Correct? Number 1. Below it is given that and to accept for each 50 share. Remember one share is of 50. For each share they are accepting 4 new preference share. And the new preference share are 5% preference share. 5% preference share capital. Total number of preference share holders were 12,000. Each share is accepting 4 new preference share into 4. 4 new preference share of rupees 10 each. So I will write here into 10. That will be equal to 480 into 10. That will make it 4,80,000. That will make it 4,80,000. Just wait. 4,80,000. So I will write here 4,80,000. Correct? 4,80,000. And then further it is given. Plus, plus they are accepting 6 equity shares. So I will write here 2 equity share capital account. And 12,000 pref 12, preference shareholders are there. For each share, they are accepting 6 equity shares of rupees 2.5 each. Into 6, into 2.50. I think it will be equal to 1,80,000. So, preference shareholder to whom you were supposed to pay 6 lakh, they are getting this time amount equal to 6,60,000. 60, so, sometime it may also happen that in order to persuade a party, the entity may have to incur a loss. So, in this case, there is a loss actually in the persuasion of what we call preference shareholders. This loss will be debited to reconstruction account to the extent of 60,000. Is it clear to you or not? Clear? Before that, there was information with respect to equity share capital which you can manage e easily. Then next information is lender to the company 1,50,000. Lenders to the company, actually lenders to the company in the balance sheet there is given loans. So out of 5,73,000 worth of lenders, 1,50,000 worth of vendors are telling, 1,50,000 worth of lenders are telling what? They have agreed to convert their loans into shares and for this purpose they will be allotted 12,000 new preference shares of 10 each and they will also be allotted 12,000 new equity shares of 2.5 each. So you can pass an entry like this, lenders account debit. In fact, you will have to write loan account debit. You can write in bracket lenders because in the balance sheet word loan is given. So lenders worth rupees 1,50,000, they have agreed to get what we call 12,000 new preference shares of 10 each. Actually new preference share capital is 5%, remember one thing, correct? New preference share capital is 5%, so you will have to write 5% preference share capital. So 12,000 shares you are delivering them and new preference share capital is of 10 each, so you are going to write here 1,20,000. And then you are going to write here to reconstruction. Sorry, not reconstruction. In this case, you are also giving them equity shares. And you are giving them 12,000 equity shares of rupees 2.50. In fact, there is no loss or gain in this particular case in settlement of lenders. Is it clear to you? So these are the two important information. And then we come across 2.6. The balance sheet of ICE and Cube Limited on 31st of 3, 2027. Correct. What is given to us? Preference shares are written down to 80 and equity shares to 280. Rupees 2, you can manage this. Actually, I will also uh, show you the entry if you want to. And then it is written preference dividend in area for 3 years. This is exactly the information which I was explaining over there. Preference dividend is in area for 3 years waived by 2 thirds. Waived by two thirds. That means the portion which is waived, you are not going to pass any entry, no entry for this. And for the balance, first of all, you will compute the dividend for three years. How you are going to compute the amount of three years? Always compute it as per the original share, original capital. Five per, sorry, eight percent of four lakh. Actually, figures I think are in lakhs, right? Four hundred lakhs. Correct. So whatever is the amount of dividend, you compute it first of all for three years. Out of that, two-third will be waived, no entry will be passed, and for one-third amount, you will have to actually pass the entry. 
and that will be considered as a loss for the balance one third equity shares of two each will be allotted correct whatever one third of preference dividend will be there you will pass the entry first of all preference dividend account debit to equity share capital and then immediately write the entry reconstruction account debit to preference dividend i hope it is clear here i have written the entry just for your sake i am showing you preference dividend account debit your amount of dividend which you are paying one third of total dividend will be equal to 16 lakh then you are discharging the dividend this time through issue of equity shares. So first you will have to pass this entry and then immediately pass this entry and always write the entry in this manner A and B. Reconstruction account debit to preference dividend account 16 lakh, 16 lakh. This is how you will have to move. Is it clear to you or not? Now we take this there are two questions important. This one also quite important wherein there are some interesting adjustment which I will let you know. Balance sheet extract of Kharab Halat Limited is given to you. Correct? Now, interesting name. 4,000 cumulative preference shares of ended each 4 lakh is given to you. Besides that, 75,000 equity share capital of 10 each, 7 lakh 50, then total 11 lakh 50 is given. Then we have been given 6% debenture secured on freehold property 3 lakh 75,000. Total amount of debenture is actually 3 lakh 75,000. Total amount of debenture is 3 lakh 75,000. And these debentures have been issued on the security of freehold property. And freehold property in the question given is 4 lakh 25,000. Freehold property 4 lakh 25,000 is given. Indirectly, it means company has committed to the debenture holders that if we would fail in the repayment, then you have every right to dispose of our freehold property and can you can recover your amount. Is it clear to you? Further in the question, it is given accrued interest. Accrued interest is also given 22,500. So total claims of the debenture holders will be equal to 397,500. Then under the current liability, bank overdraft, trade payable and director's loans are also given. Then we come over to the main line of the question. Here it is written, debenture holder agreed to take one freehold property at its book value of rupees 1 lakh at a valuation of 1 lakh 20,000. Now, we have seen that our freehold property is actually 4 lakh 25,000. Out of this 4 lakh 25,000, question says that debenture holder have taken freehold property worth rupees 1 lakh at a valuation of 1 lakh 20. Out of freehold property, one freehold property, there might be several freehold property. Is it clear to you? So, 1 lakh is the book value. 1 lakh worth of freehold property has been taken over by debenture holders at rupees 1 lakh 20,000. Your first entry will be for appreciation in the value of freehold property. Your entry will be freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. Is it clear to you? I am not writing the entry, but you can understand it now. So your first entry will be under such situation, freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. This is the entry you will write because your freehold property worth rupees 1 lakh has been valued at 1 lakh 20,000. So you are going to write this entry. First entry. Now 1 lakh 20,000 worth of freehold property has been given to the debenture holder. Obviously, you will have to write another entry, 6% debenture account debit, whatever amount of debenture holders are there. You are giving them freehold property now, which has a value of 1 lakh 20,000. Correct? So far. Now, further it is given. This is important line. In part payment of their holding, in part payment of their holding, that means this payment is not in full settlement. In part payment of their holding, 1 lakh worth of property has been given to debenture holder at 1 lakh 20,000. That means debenture holder will reduce by 1 lakh 20,000 only. 1 lakh 20,000 because this is part payment. That means part payment means their account is, is still unsettled. It is not again. If, if it would have been written in full settlement, I would have written 6% debenture, 3,75,000 worth of debenture and rest of the portion would have been transmitted to reconstruction account. But it is written part liability. That means debentures will get reduced only by 120000 to the extent of the worth of payment. And balanced debenture will appear in the balance sheet. Is it clear to you? Further, it is given. And to provide additional cash of Rs. 130000 secured by a floating charge on company's asset 
at an interest rate of 8%. That means debenture holder, first of all, they have agreed to take a freehold property having a value of 1 lakh at a valuation of 1 lakh 20 in part payment. And they have also agreed, they means the debenture holder, they have also agreed to you know, actually provide additional cash of 1 lakh 30,000. What should be the entry for this? What should be the entry for this? Debenture holders have agreed to give us additional cash. Now let me know of this from you first. What should be the entry? Deventure holders have agreed to give us some additional cash. So obviously I am going to debit cash. Now you simply tell me what amount should I credit? What account should I credit? Not amount. I am receiving cash. Deventure holders have agreed to provide us additional cash. Of course, this additional cash which they are providing us, they are providing us in the form of loan and the interest is at the rate of 10, 8%. Now you let me know of entry regarding this. In your, in your opinion, what should be the entry? We are receiving actually cash of rupees 1,20,000. In the meantime, I must also tell you that we have already released the test answer, test paper and, and also the answers of consolidation. Kindly download that and tomorrow I will also upload. Tomorrow also I will upload uh, what we call test paper of business combination wherein I have kept there about 15 MCQ based question and one long question, correct? And there was a question in the consolidation test paper and I have also solved their full length question also I have solved. So kindly download the paper in case if you haven't downloaded the same. Yes, Srinivasan Rajagopalan told me loan account should be credited. Islamuddin told me cash account debit to loan account. Yes, you both are absolutely correct. Actually, many among us are under the impression because we are taking this amount from debenture holder, many us are tempted to actually write and in fact, not only us, but many authors feel to write debentures. Don't write debentures because if you are going to write debenture, it will suggest as if the company is issuing more debentures. So that should not be the policy. You will have to write here 8% secured loan. 8% because this amount has been taken on floating charge. So it is a sort of security. Floating charge means if tomorrow this company will undergo liquidation, then whatever amount we are going to realize from all the assets will have to be used first of all in payment of this liability. So this, this point is quite important from this particular uh, area. And another important point, accrued debenture interest to be paid. Now you tell me the entry, accrued debenture interest to be paid. I told you earlier reconstruction expenses paid. Now, here it is a case of accrued interest paid. Earlier I told you reconstruction expenses paid, penalty charges paid, fees and fines paid, correct, where you were passing two entries, correct. And here it is given accrued interest paid. What should be the entry? What should be the entry? Should I write here two entries similar to the one which I passed in case of what we call reconstruction expenses, penalty charges, fees or fines. This time I will have to pass entry accrued interest account debit to cash account and nothing else because it is a recorded liability. It is not a loss to you when you are disposed, when you are meeting the obligation, you are paying off the liability. Yes, absolutely. In this case, only one entry will be passed as Srinivasan told. The reason being is that because it is a case of recorded liability, it is not a loss to you. So in this particular question, I will have to actually discuss only this much. So as far as second part of this particular chapter is concerned, in the second part, I will do one comprehensive question. And obviously the two question, one is from June 23, old course. It is from old course, but it's still relevant for you. And of course, another question from June 24, uh, June 23 model paper. And also we will do comprehensive question with respect to uh, what we call June uh, recently held examination 24 examination also. This is the question which came in your June. I have written this number. Actually our staff has committed this mistake. It, it is June 23 for, for examination question. Correct. So in fact, 
mistake is not committed here it is written june 24th so in the next session we will do all the questions which have come in the recent examination in one comprehensive question so that will that is more than sufficient you can simply actually bank upon these sessions for what we call your entire course we are not simply taking as time and again i have been telling to you for the sake of taking the day we are doing our level best effort to open down this particular question first of all comprehensive question till up to 2.9 we finished in the last session and now we are picking up good evening to everyone correct extremely sorry for today's this particular debacle in fact so in this particular question you are being given this is the balance sheet of rebuilt limited as on 31st of 3 2027 in this particular balance sheet what we are being given first of all let's have a look one there are 35,000 equity shares of ended is 35 lakh and besides that 15,000 10 percent preference shares of ended is 15 lakh is it clear to you now Reserve and surplus are also there. Profit and loss account, 19,50,000. You must have noticed that here, actually, there is a negative balance. I need not require to tell you what you are supposed to do, the treatment. Then security premium is also there, 7% debentures, director's loans. Then coming over to the asset side, what we find, property, plant and equipment. And one is land and building, then plant and machinery. As far as tangible items are con concerned, then there is goodwill, 3,50,000. Besides that, we have got under current asset stock in trade daters and cash cash at bank. So far, this much information is given and question states that no dividend has been paid on preference shares since last five years. No dividend has been paid on preference shares since last five years. As I we discussed a lot last time, first of all, in your rough somewhere, you compute it areas of preference dividend. If I would ask you what will be the amount of areas of preference dividend, you should be in a position to give me the answer within a flick of second. Now, as far as your preference share capital is concerned, if you look into the balance sheet, we have 15 lakh worth of preference share capital. 15 lakh worth of preference share capital. Correct? So, 15 lakh. Always compute areas of dividend as per the original capital which is given in the balance sheet. Now 15 lakh rate of dividend is 10%. Correct? So one year's dividend will be equal to 1 lakh 50,000. And preference dividend is in areas since last five years. So you are going to multiply it with five to get 7 lakh 50,000. As you know, contingent li it is a, it is considered as a sort of contingent liability. It is always written under footnote. It is not a recorded liability. Now, further question states that board of directors of the company decide upon the following scheme of reconstruction and the consent of the consent of the respective parties have been taken into account. Point number one, each equity share will be reduced to 25 each. Our equity share capital at this moment is 35,000 of rupees 100 each. So my entry will be equity share capital account debit in bracket 35,000 into 100, 35 lakh. Because now the equity share capital has been reduced to 25. So then I will write two equity share capital. This is our new equity share capital. I have written the entry for you also. Equity share capital 35,000 into 100, 35 lakh. New equity share capital will be 35,000 into 25, 8 lakh 75. Equity share capital is falling down by 75. This amount you are going to take to reconstruction account. Needless to add that. Correct. Besides that, now we are being given over here existing each existing preference share reduced to 75 your existing preference share capital first of all first i actually just study first i go through this particular sentence only till up to this particular point correct existing preference share capital as you can see in the balance sheet we have 10 percent preference share capital 15,000 into 115 lakh and because it is given existing preference share capital has come down to 75. So that means the new preference share capital will be 10% preference share capital, 15,000 into 75. And it is coming down by 25. So 375 you will take to reconstruction account. So now your preference share capital is 10% preference share capital. Now after the reduction, 10% preference share capital, 15,000 into 75. 15,000 into 75. This is your now after the cancellation of the old preference share capital. This is now your present preference share capital. Now further in the question it is written. Then that means first of all question says that preference share capital has come down to 75. That means reduced by 25. Then exchanged for one new 13% preference shares of 50 each. After this what is happening? These preference shareholders are telling 
काइंडली एक्चुअली गिव अस न्यू प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल 13 परसेंट प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल 13 परसेंट प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल देर आर 15,000 थाउजेंड एज फार एज नंबर इज कंसर्न ईच प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर इज गोइंग टू रिसीव न्यू प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल बट न्यू प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल विल बी इश्यूड एंड इट विल कैरी ए फेस वैल्यू ऑफ फिफ्टी इट इज रिटर्न ओवर हेयर then exchanged for one new 13% preference share of 50 each and similarly and one equity share of 25 each and we are also giving them one equity share capital of 25 each so these preference shareholders are also being given 15000 equity shares to the extent of 25 so this will be the entry so here i have written this particular entry you can see first i have reduced the preference share capital then i have written this entry 10% preference share capital account 11 lakh 25000 to 13% preference share capital there are 15000 preference share each share will get one new preference share at the rate of 57 lakh 50 and then two equity share capital 15000 into 25 2 lakh 75 you can combine both these entry if you want to actually just pass a single entry what entry you are going to pass you will pass entry like this preference share capital account debit Two, third, two reconstruction account, and then two thirteen percent preference share capital account, two equity share capital. Instead of these two entry, you can combine them into one entry. Now further, it is written. This point we had a lot of discussion in the last session. If you remember, actually, <clears throat> this is preference shareholders have foregone their right of preference dividend in area for four years. That mean out of seven lakh fifty thousand, which is areas of dividend for five years. Now four years dividend has been waived off. Now four years dividend will be equal to six lakh, and one years dividend will be equal to one lakh fifty thousand. As we know that the portion of the dividend which get cancelled, no entry need to be passed for the same. However, whatever portion which we need to pay, we need to pass an entry, and it will be considered as a loss. As you know, dividend is not a real liability. so if something which is not a recorded liability and we have to pay that then it is considered as a sort of loss so here we are going to pass the entry like this first of all in fact here i have written entry preference dividend account debit preference dividend account debit 1 lakh 50000 this time preference dividend one years dividend is being paid but in order to pay them we are offering them equity share capital is it clear to you but preference dividend which you have paid will be considered as a sort of loss and that's the reason reconstruction account need to be debited so that is why you are going to pass the entry reconstruction account debit to preference dividend correct although you can pass one single entry it is completely your choice then another important point in this question is debenture holders will be given an option to either convert either accept 90% of their claims in cash or to convert their claims into new 13% preference shares of 50 each issued at par what does it mean it means here in this particular question what is happening our debenture holders actually there are 5 lakh worth of debentures in this particular question correct debenture holders are being offered two options one option is one option is they can get their dues settled for cash this is option number 1 and under the second option we are offering the debenture holder to get their debentures converted into new 13% preference shares however new preference preference shares is of rupees 50 each however further it is written that if debenture holders will opt for cash then they will be given only 90% only 90% for example let us say out of 2 lakh out of 5 lakh let us say 50% of the debenture holder decide for this particular option then what will happen out of 5 lakh 2 lakh 50000 worth of debenture holders are opting for cash then we are not going to pay them entire 2 lakh 50000 we will simply pay them 90% that is equal to 2 lakh 25000 in cash in full settlement and 25000 will be gained to the company this is what we mean by this particular line debenture holders will be given option to either accept 90% of their claims in cash that mean if they are going to demand cash they will be offered only 90% correct however or they can get their dues converted into what we call 13% preference shares of 50 each and later on in the question it is written one half 
इन वैल्यू ऑफ द डिवेंचर होल्डर एक्सेप्टेड प्रेफरेंस शेयर फॉर देयर क्लेम डेट मीन आउट ऑफ फाइव लैख टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड और ऑप्टिंग फॉर कन्वर्जन सो एंट्री विल बी सिंपल टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ डिवेंचर होल्डर विल बी गिवन थर्टीन परसेंट प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल टू दी एक्सटेंट ऑफ टू लैख फिफ्टी एंड रेस्ट ऑफ द डिवेंचर होल्डर विल बी गिवन दिस मच ऑफ कैश एंड दिस मच विल बी ट्रांसफर टू री कंस्ट्रक्शन अकाउंट सो डेट इज वाई योर एंट्री विल बी लाइक दिस सेवन परसेंट डिवेंचर फाइव लैख एज पर बैलेंस शीट नाउ फिफ्टी परसेंट आर गोइंग फॉर कन्वर्जन ऑप्शन दे विल बी गिवन देर एंटायर अमाउंट ऑफ टू लैख फिफ्टी बाई वे ऑफ थर्टीन परसेंट प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल हाउ एवर द रिमेनिंग टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ डिवेंचर होल्डर्स आर आस्किंग फॉर कैश बट दे विल नॉट बी गिवन फुल अमाउंट इन कैश only 90% so 90% of 2 lakh 50 2 lakh 25 and balance 10% will be gained to the company this is how you are going to pass the entry is it clear to you further in this particular question it is written contingent liability of 1 lakh 50000 has become payable suppose suppose if this particular sentence would have been given till till only up to this particular point that contingent liability of 1 lakh 50000 has become payable what entry you would have passed suppose if there is a contingent liability if there is a contingent liability and this liability has become payable how will you pass the entry just think for a while before you deliver the answer if a contingent liability suddenly you find that it has become a liability obviously then you will have to record it as a liability so in order to record the liability you will write contingent liability payable account because this liability has materialized and it has become a liability i have told you so many time in accounts whenever the liability would increase and there is no corresponding benefit attached to it in that case it is always considered as a loss are you getting my point or not so logically i would have had debited reconstruction account because it is a loss if this question would have stated only this much that there is a contingent liability and it has become payable if it has become payable now i will record the contingent liability as a liability i will also present it in the balance sheet and because my liability has increased without fetching me any returns so that is why it it is considered as a loss and i will have to debit reconstruction account correct number 1 right it has crystallized right uh, it has materialized crystallized and converted into a liability now so it will be considered as a loss number 1 however in this particular question some more elaboration some more facts are given with respect to this particular point now question says that this liability contingent liability has become payable which has been created by a wrong action of one director because of some wrong wrong what we call action of one of the director this particular contingent liability has become now payable now because this liability has materialized into a real liability but because of that particular di director that director must be punished that particular director must be held responsible for the same so that is why that director he has agreed to compensate this loss out of the loan given by the director to the company now this director what he is telling i have given 150000 to your entity this director might have given 150000 worth of loan it is given in the balance sheet director's loan you can see here director's loan is 150 that mean our entity owe 150000 to the director now what this director is telling well i take this responsibility this contingent liability has become payable on account of my what we call wrong doing so i'm ready to accept what we call my mistake and i'm ready to compensate the same so how will i compensate what you do now director is telling to the company whatever loan which you you means the entity owe to me now you need not require to pay my loan correct now you need not require to repay my loan instead you meet this particular liability out of this particular loan so instead of debiting reconstruction now what we are going to do we are going to simply debit the director's loan account 
आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट सो डेट वे राउंड नाउ डायरेक्टर लोन इज फिनिश्ड बिकॉज इट वॉज क्रेडिटेड नाउ इट इट विल बी डेबिटेड डेट मीन नाउ अवर एंटिटी नीड नॉट रिक्वायर टू पे द लोन अमाउंट टू द डायरेक्टर्स एंड दिस वे राउंड डायरेक्टर हैज एक्सेप्टेड हिस मिस्टेक सो योर एंट्री विल बी डायरेक्टर्स लोन डेट मीन इन स्टेड ऑफ डेबिटिंग दिस लॉस टू रिकंस्ट्रक्शन यू आर कंपनसेटिंग इट अगेंस्ट दी वट वी कॉल डायरेक्टर्स लोन अकाउंट इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी वन इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी वन और नॉट why we debited this particular loss to directors loan because director is compensating us correct so this way round entity is now escaped of what we call making payment to the just let me see some messages are flashing in okay uh, directors loan account debit to contingent liability account is it clear to you i hope i am clear at this particular point to everyone so now with respect to this particular point things are clear then we move little bit further here it is written goodwill account does not have any value in present because it is clearly given that goodwill is not having any value you will have to write it off later on number 1 number 2 further it is given there is decrease in value of plant and machinery inventory and trade receivable by 4 lakh 1 lakh and 1 lakh 50 obviously the values of these items is falling down you will have to write them off Now question also states that forty thousand new equity shares of twenty five each are to be issued at par and payable in full on application. The issue was underwritten for a commission of four percent. Now pay attention here. Forty thousand new equity shares of twenty five were issued. So your entry will be simple: bank account debit to equity share capital account forty thousand into twenty five. I have written this entry over here, so you can see. first of all let me rub it out so that you shouldn't get confused yeah here is the entry bank account debit to equity share capital account but question has also stated that we have also paid some underwriting commission that is commission at the rate of 4% that been in order to issue these shares the, our entity might have taken services of the underwriters as you know and underwriters would be given what we call a commission for the same so underwriters commission next entry will be underwriters commission you mu you must compute the amount of commission on the value of the issue price is it clear to you your issue price is 10 lakh so 4% of 10 lakh will be equal to 40000 so this will be the entry which you are going to pass underwriting commission account debit to bank account that is 40000 40000 is it clear to you or not right sir now so often i have already told you whenever you are meeting any expenses correct because underwriting commission is not a recorded liability and you are just paying actually underwriting commission so this commission amount must be written off to reconstruction immediately and you must write it off immediately correct so that is why another entry will follow reconstruction account debit to underwriting commission 40000 40000 is it clear to everyone till up to this particular point keep on actually messaging me so that i can i have a feeling that you are able to listen to me my voice is coming clearly and you are understanding the things also very clearly those who are connected with us through sas system they are telling fine sir we are able to understand but i'm not getting any messages from those who are connected with us through youtube correct anyway now there is another point in this particular question another particular line is with respect to total expenses incurred by the company in connection with the scheme excluding underwriting commission is 15000 as you know often when a company or entity actually adopts the scheme of internal reconstruction correct company may have to actually spend some amount so question is telling in point number 8 that this entity incurred 15000 worth of expenses on reconstruction scheme besides the underwriting commission that and as you know for expenses what entry we need to pass so often we have talked about this particular point reconstruction expenses account debit to bank this will be the first entry which you are going to put up obviously then another entry will follow to write off these expenses against the reconstruction after having reached this particular point correct now i will try to accumulate the total balance in the reconstruction account wherever wherever reconstruction account will get credited somewhere i will note them down correct as per the entries and wherever reconstruction account is getting debited i will also note them so that mean there will be a net balance of 31 lakh 20000 
in the entries wherever reconstruction is getting credited i will uh, in my rough work i can sim simply add and wherever it is getting debited i will su subtract it so i will find that there is a net balance of 31 lakh 20000 net balance of 31 lakh 20 now you will use this balance to write off what we call various item but before we start writing off there is a process to it first of all look into the question and as per the direction of the question it is given the here that goodwill is not having any value so you need to write it off number one besides that it was given in the question that value of plant and machinery inventory and trade receivable is falling down by four lakh one lakh and 150 respectively you will take that into account so first you will take into account the information which is given in the question then you will have to look into your balance sheet just have a closer look and try to find out are there any accumulated losses are there any overvalued items or are there any deferred expenditure because those items you need to write them off irrespective of the information as we discussed in the last session so here in this in the balance sheet there is accumulated loss to the tune of 19 lakh 50 thousand we will write it off also and whatever balance we will get after writing off all the item that balance will have to be posted to the capital reserve as you know so after having done this particular question, in the first 30 minutes actually I think I did that particular question and I started off with 4.2. Now 4.2, when I started this particular session, correct, when I started this particular session I told you that question, just open down your question number 4.2, this is related to June 24 examination. When I started this the revisionary session, internal reconstruction last time, in opening few lines, I mentioned that if we are going to scan the new syllabus question paper of last 348 end, we'll find that in every question paper there was a question from what we call internal reconstruction. Correct? Even the last year examination was not an exception. We found a question over there. I also told generally the question which we receive in the examination either of 7 marks or 14 marks. Now this question, June 24 examination question, I think this is the last question in your notes, kindly pull it now. Many a time a student demand the solution and I always tell them, sometime I am bounded by my legal agreement, so that is why I cannot put the printed solution on the public platform. So that's the reason I have, I intentionally did not give you the solution of this particular question. In case if you want to, if you are really interested in having the solution, kindly pause the video, note it down in your spare time. It will hardly consume 5 or 10 minutes. Let's have a look over here. Anyway, the summarized balance sheet of Meghna Limited as on 31st of 3, 2024 is at your dis disposal. Now, in this particular balance sheet, see in the examination when you are going to read the question, there is a way to go through the question. Just look at here. One item is property, plant and equipment. Tangible item is given 5 lakh 50 thousand. The movement actually I find that in the balance sheet there is some note number is given. I will stop myself from going through what we call further. In fact, I will stop here and look into the note number. In fact, as I told you, prior to your joining, I started off this session. That is why marks are there. Let me rub them off so that you shouldn't get confused unnecessarily. Correct? Well, I will look into the notes. These are the notes. It is part of the question. In note number five, it is given that under tangi tangible asset, there are two items, freehold property and plant and machinery. The moment I will figure it out, what exactly note number five is. Now, I come to know that there are two items under this particular figure. There are two items. I will note down separately. Freehold property, four lakh, plant and machinery, one lakh. Is it clear to you? Clear to you? That should be your policy when you are going to attempt such questions in the examination. Immediately note down the, and segregate that item so that you are escaped of time and again looking here and there. That way around your focus will also not get wavered. Now, further here it is given. Another item given intangible. Once again here written note number 6. So I will look into note number 6. Let me see what is there in the question. In note number 6 it is stated that there are two items under intangible. Correct? 1 lakh and 50,000. 1 lakh and 50,000 under intangible asset. Actually there is a mistake in the question because nowadays companies which are following NDAs they are supposed to prepare. They are supposed to prepare their balance sheet as per division 2. And as per division 2, goodwill is not considered as a part of intangible asset. Goodwill is reflected separately as a separate line item. Correct? But anyway, 
Here it is given under intangible assets, goodwill 1 lakh, trademarks 50,000. Immediately in my rough somewhere, I write goodwill is 1 lakh and trademark is 50,000. Is it clear to you? This should be your policy when you will go through the question in the examination. Under current assets, we have inventories. Then under financial assets, we have trade receivable and loans and advances. Their total is also given in the outer column. This is total of your asset side. Correct. Now coming over to the what we call liability side. In the liability side, just wait actually before I correct. Let me rub them out. Now, under the equity and liability, it is given equity under equity, equity share capital is written. Note number one is written. Amount of equity share capital given to us is 7,50,000. So I will immediately go through the notes and in the notes, especially in note number one, share capital authorized, issued and fully paid. We have been given that this entity is having 5,000 equity shares of 100 each, that is 5 lakh and 2,500 8 percent preference share capital of 100 is 2 lakh 50 total 7 lakh 50. The movement actually I find that there are two items immediately I write it this way equity share capital and 8 percent preference share capital. Is it clear to you? It is consuming a bit of time right now but it will actually help me saving my time later on when I will start the solution. Is it clear to you? This should be your policy in the examination also. Then we have been given here other equity and again the note is given. Under note number two, you are being given other equity. There is one item retained earnings and retained earning in bracket. Actually, they have written profit and loss account. As you know, retained earnings actually stands for profit and loss account. And this is a negative figure actually 10 lakh. So there is only one item in other equity and that is negative 10 lakh. Is it clear to you? Their total is written in the outer column. We are not concerned with that. Now under equity, we have equity share. We have equity share capital and preference share capital and other equity we have got retained earning. This is what we are more concerned of with. Then we are being given further in this particular information. What else? Under the non-current liability, we are being given long-term borrowings. And again, there is a note number three. Let's have a look what is given under long-term borrowings. This is note number three, eight percent debenture. Only one item is there. So as far as this five lakh is concerned, actually it is eight percent debenture. You need to write that. Similarly, now we come over to current liability. Under the current liability, we are given short-term borrowing. Again, a note is there. Short-term borrowing, total amount 5 lakh is there. But in the note, it is written that short-term borrowings comprise of two items, one loan from directors and bank overdraft. Correct? So that means our short-term borrowings, which is given in the question, there are two items, 3 lakhs and 2 lakh. One is loan from director and another one is bank overdraft. So there are two items in it. Coming over to what we call short term borrowings. Well, there are two items. Then further, we are also given trade payables, but there is no note number that mean amount of trade payable is equal to 250 in the outer column. I will their total is written 750. This is the total of equity and liability side. So you have gone through the entire length and breadth of this particular question. Now we will go through the scheme. The following scheme of internal reconstruction was framed, approved by the court and all concerned parties implemented. Quite obviously in practical life, whenever actually internal internal uh, reconstruction scheme is adopted, we are going to hold down a meeting with the shareholder where the meeting will be approved. Then we will have to actually receive an order from the court also. Then only internal, uh, internal reconstruction scheme can be implemented. Anyway, the first point here is preference share to be written down to 25 each and the equity share to rupees 20 each. First of all, question has stated, that preference share will be written down to 25 each. Both preference share capital and equity share capital are being re are reduced to actually are reduced to preference share to be written down to 25 each, 225 each and equity share capital is reduced to 20 each. That means preference share capital is coming down by 75 and equity share capital is coming down by 80. Important point is that as far as new preference share capital is concerned, that is of 25 and equity share capital is of 20. Now question further state, each class of shares will be converted into shares of 100 each after the reduction. Correct? Let's have a look what will be the replication. This is the solution I'm correct providing you right now. You can take the screenshot also and note it down later on. 
एट परसेंट प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल राइट माई प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड शेयर ऑफ हंड्रेड इच एज यूजल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम गोइंग टू राइट दिस एंट्री बिकॉज प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल हैज कम डाउन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव सो न्यू प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल विल बी टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव डेट विल बी इक्वल टू सिक्सटी टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड दिस क्वेश्चन केम इन द एग्जामिनेशन फॉर सेवन मार्क्स करेक्ट and then i will write here capital reduction account you can use the word reconstruction account correct 2500 into 75 this will be your gain so your gain is equal to 187500 and now your present preference share capital is this much now important point is that question is telling both these classes of both these classes preference share capital and equity share capital after the reduction each class each class is then converted into 100 is then converted into into 100 what does it mean actually see here now my preference share capital as we can see 62500 my preference share capital presently now after the scheme of internal reconstruction presently it is 2500 after this this is an actually a preference share capital is 2500 into 25 Here I credited it. Now I am again debiting it. Correct. Now sixty two thousand five hundred. You divide it by hundred because now what directors are deciding that they want to keep the face value of the preference share at rupees hundred. So that means now what will happen? My number of preference share which were two thousand five hundred will reduce because now my preference share earlier were two thousand five hundred share of twenty five each. Now I am converting them into of hundred each. So quite obviously sixty two thousand five hundred divided by hundred will be equal to six twenty five shares of hundred each. Indirectly, it means now my preference share capital is. Actually, sixty-two thousand five hundred, but six hundred twenty-five per six hundred twenty-five preference shares of hundred each. I hope I am clear till up to this particular point. Is this point clear to everyone? Now coming over to equity share capital. As it was given in the question, we have five thousand equity shares of hundred each. First, I am going to debit this. It is given in the question equity share capital reduced to actually twenty each. So new equity share capital will be five thousand into twenty, and it is reducing by eighty. So you will transfer the this figure to the reconstruction or capital reduction account five thousand into eighty. That is equal to four lakh. Is it clear to you? Important point is that at present your equity share capital after this decision. 5000 shares of 20 now you have decided to convert share of 20 into 100 are you getting my point so now your entry will be 5000 equity share capital 5000 into 20 1 lakh now 1 lakh divided by 100 now you will have 1000 equity shares so that mean after all these decisions after all these decision we have 625 preference shares of 100 each and now we have got 1000 equity shares of 100 each is it clear to you or not i hope so now further it is given in the question debenture holders to take over freehold property book value 2 lakh at a valuation of rupees 2 lakh 50000 in part repayment of their holding and further also it is written remaining freehold property to be valued at rupees 6 lakh now just to make the point little bit more clear in the question we are being given freehold property is 4 lakh somewhere i write it here freehold property is 4 lakh correct freehold property is equal to 4 lakh then i note down the debentures as far as debentures are concerned you are having 8% debenture to the extent of 5 lakh so you will write here 5 lakh also now here it is written debenture holder to take over freehold property book value 2 lakh that mean out of 4 lakh worth of property out of 4 lakh worth of property 2 lakh worth of property is being taken over by the debenture holder but debenture holder took 2 lakh worth of property at a valuation of 2 lakh 50000 2 lakh worth of property has been taken over at a valuation of 2 lakh 50000 first of all you will pass the entry for appreciation in freehold property now freehold property is going up by 50000 your entry will be freehold property account debit to reconstruction or capital reduction account that is 50000 50000 that mean remaining freehold property now 2 lakh because 2 lakh worth of freehold property has been taken over by debenture holders and they have taken it at 2 lakh 50000 
and it is written they have taken over this property in repayment in part repayment of their holding in part repayment of their holding so obviously then you will have to pass another entry debenture account debit to freehold property this 2 lakh worth of freehold property is being delivered to the debenture holder in part payment so that mean debenture holder liability will come down only by 2 lakh 50000 Now question says that your remaining freehold property, this is your remaining freehold property, is valued at rupees six lakh. So again there is an appreciation. Again you are going to pass another entry freehold property account debit, freehold property account debit to capital reduction account that is four lakh. This is how you are going to pass the entry for this particular thing. I have written all those entries. Say here. One freehold property account debit to capital reduction. First of all, increase in value of the property which is taken over by what we call director. Two lakh worth of property gone up to two lakh fifty. Then eight percent debenture account debit two lakh fifty to freehold property. You have delivered the freehold property in part payment to debenture holder, and remaining freehold property has gone up by four lakh. You are going to write this particular entry. Is it clear to you? Such an easy question, isn't it or not? If you have done the concepts very well, everything appears so easy. Further, it is given loan from directors to be waived off in full. I need not require to tell you the entry. Director loan was written under short term provisions, so director's loan three lakh was there, and it has been completely waived off. Obviously, you are going to pass this entry. Director's loan account debit to capital reduction account. Now everything is over. After that, question states that stock fifty thousand need to be written off. Twelve thousand five hundred to be provided for bad debts, and then profit and loss account balance need to be written off. Trade marks and goodwill also be written off. It is given in the question. We will write them off. And loans and advances are to be written off. And loans and advances are to be written off. Now see here in this particular question what we are going to write here. First of all. Loans and advances to be written off. They have just to confuse you. They have added it actually. You when see here, here it is loan from directors and director loan is already written off because they have already cancelled it. So it is already written off. So you need not require to bother about that. Now first of all you will compute the balance in your capital reduction account. For that wherever capital reduction account is getting credited, you will simply add wherever it is getting debited. You simply subtract that. So net balance in capital reduction will be this much. And as per the information, there is one more loans and advances in the question. I think is given. It was loan from director. Was there any loans and advances in the question? Let me see. Actually, was there any loans and advances in the question? Let me let me check it also because it could be a possibility. I have written here twenty five thousand. There must be some amount with respect to loans and advances, but it is not given. Trade payables are given, and director loan was how much? Short term director's loan three lakh, and loan from director to be waived off in full. Actually, loans and advance some figure is appearing, but it is not mentioned here. I will check it again. But anyway. Capital reduction account debit to profit and loss account and rest of the items you are going to write it off, correct? All these items you will have to write off. There is a balance of one lakh. I will have to check this figure loans and advances. You kindly also check because you will be having the paper. If it is given in the question and there must be some loans and advances towards the asset side. Let me check the asset side also because we haven't checked the asset side. Yes, it is given actually. I forgotten. I myself have printed the question. Myself have forgotten. Anyway, so here it is given loans and advances because it is clearly given in the question. There are two types of loan. One, here is loan from director. Actually, they have already waived their loan. It was it is already written off. But loans and advances actually is an asset. So that is why actually question is telling it will have to be written off. So you will write them off. So loans and advances. Why you are writing off? The question is that. perhaps you might be under an impression that you might not recover this particular loan that is why you have taken this decision to write it off so that's the reason we have written it off also but we are writing it off because a question has stated i have already told you first of all always take into account the information which is given in the question and accordingly you will have to write them off and kindly check this balance capital reserve balance is it coming to 1 lakh or not because this is the net answer which is supplied by your institute your institute supplies Only the net answers, as you know, correct. Anyway, there is one more question. There is one more question in your notes, and this question is four point one. 
I hope that you can do this particular question of your own. At least one question you should be in a position to do. Following is the balance sheets of Society Limited up. I'm simply actually uh, going through this particular question. You should be in a position to do this particular question. Property, plant and equipment is given. Then we are given intangible assets. Then non-current, under the non-current investment, we are given 10 lakh. As far as current assets are concerned, 100 lakh. Besides that, total is this much. Then under the equity and liability, we are simply given share capital and then under reserve and surplus profit and loss account negative balance. And then under the non-current liability, we have got this amount, then trade payables, correct? This much of information is given to you in this particular question. Further, in the notes, actually, it is given that share capital. As far as share capital is concerned in this question, you are having equity share capital this much. You are having 50,000, 12% preference share to the extent of 50 lakh. Correct. Further, under other equity, we have already seen there is only one item of profit and loss account carrying 6 lakh negative balance. Correct. Reserve and surplus profit and loss account negative balance 6 lakh. As far as long term borrowings are concerned, which is given in the question, we are having uh, debentures only. So 40,000, 40 lakh figure which is given, actually it is of 10% debenture. Now, point number, of, under the current liabilities, we are being given, there are short term provisions, 1 lakh, there is provision for taxation, 1 lakh, and non-current investment, 10 lakh. In fact, here I haven't written the notes, but at least you can go through the notes, no problem. Now your first line is all the equity share will be reduced to 40 each. I need not require to ask you this particular entry because you should be in a position. Your first entry will be equity share capital account debit, right in bracket 1 lakh into 200, write this amount. Now equity share capital is reduced to 40, then you will write two equity share capital 1 lakh into, right, right. Pujita, yes, got, got, right. it was, it was given, I, I skipped, I'm actually receiving your messages very late today, actually, I do not know, I think there is some problem in the settings today, anyway, so 50,000, 12% preference shares of 100 each, is it clear to you, 50,000, 12% preference shares of 100 each, first I was talking about equity share capital, your entry will be equity share capital account debit, 1 lakh shares were there, 1 lakh shares of rupees 100 each, that is equal to whatever it is equal to you write the figure by yourself then to equity share capital 1 lakh into 40 i'm simply giving you the clues 1 lakh into 40 and then you will transfer the amount to reconstruction account entry will be 1 lakh into 60. this is with respect to equity share capital similarly with respect to preference share capital you can pass in fact i have written the entries actually i thought i haven't given the solution now, in this particular question, preference share capital is 50 lakh. Preference share capital is reduced to 60. This is your new preference share capital and it is coming down by 40,000. So, 20,000 will be taken to the reconstruction. We have done a, done a question like this one in our earlier session, I think so. So, you should be in a position to do this particular question. That was the same question, in fact. You must have noticed this, is, this question is absolutely same to the one which we did earlier. Anyway... Further, it is written rate of interest on debenture is increased to 12%. Actually, my total number of debentures are 10%. So, first of all, I will debit the 10% debenture account 40 lakh. And now I am issuing them new debenture 12%. And further, it is given here in this question that debenture holders surrendered their existing debentures of 100 each. They have surrendered their existing debenture. That is why we are debiting the old debentures. Correct? So, our old debentures are coming back to us and they are exchanging the same for the new debenture. This line we did in the last question, if you remember, in the last session. So, 10% debenture account, existing debenture will be debited and we are offering them 12% debenture, 4,000 debenture, East debenture will get what we call a new debenture of 70 so 28 lakh and rest will be transferred to your reconstruction account you can manage this question of your own one of the creators of the company to whom we are supposed to pay 20 lakh decides to actually forego 40 percent of the claim pass 40 percent will be taken to the reconstruction for the balance 12 lakh we will issue them equity share capital almost same question we did in the last session trade creators 20 lakh to reconstruction because they have foregone 40% and for the balance we have issued them equity share capital. 
Besides that, in this particular question, it is given that property, plant and equipment is written down by 30%. You can manage it. Current asset are to be revalued at 45 lakh. Current asset in the balance sheet is given to you at a figure of at a figure of 100 lakhs. So now current asset have been valued at 45 lakh means current asset will come down by 55 lakh. You will have to write them off. Further, it is given taxation liability of the company is 1 lakh 50. In the last class, we talked about this. So your entry will be first of all, increase the because in the balance sheet, it is given 1 lakh provision for tax 1 lakh is given. Your first entry will be increase in liability. So you will credit the amount but this liability is increasing without fetching you any return so it is a loss so your entry will be reconstruction account debit to income tax liability account 50000 this will be your first entry see here provision for reconstruction account debit to provision for tax for increasing the liability you must settle it also provision for tax account debit to bank account actually instead of writing bank it would be better if you will write current asset because in the question word bank separately is not given only current assets have been given so you will presume that this amount is included in current assets so it is better instead of writing to bank you simply write to current asset account and then obviously after having done that now you will take into account the total of the reconstruction and then rest of the process is similar to the one which you are accustomed to is it clear to you so these are the two questions this question was from your june december 23 examination correct and in our regular notes there are other questions we have also included but that's a different thing right now we have tried our level best efforts correct not only to give you revisionary session but to give you maximum possible which we generally give in the regular classes so this is all for the day i thought we take leave of you for today and uh, obviously we shall be meeting you tomorrow most probably most probably tomorrow and i'm going to take a chapter by the name of financial instrument correct so financial instrument revision might for may follow tomorrow actually and most probably the class will be held at 8 30. actually tomorrow at 8 30 i will be meeting you with financial instrument is it clear to you or not? Today, I do not know there is some problem. I think because I'm getting messages a little bit late. And Upindra Rajpur told me, thank you, sir, for your efforts. Thank you very much for your such, what we call information, love and affection. We get actually energized to end. And of course, we are. And your messages, uh, it was so nice to see you. Almost everyone gave the messages. That's exactly what, what you should keep on doing. When you keep on writing the messages under the YouTube comment boxes, as I told you, it gives a little bit of encouragement to the others also. So they too can take the benefit. Although it's a pretty simple chapter, but still you shouldn't neglect it at the same time. Correct? So looking forward to hold down another meeting on Monday at 8.30 with financial instrument. Correct? Either financial instrument. First of all, financial instrument is on the card. And after that, we'll take valuation of shares, valuation of goodwill. Then we'll follow it up with what we call share-based payment. And finally, we will wrap it with NDAs. Correct? So that will be our policy. Shall meet you in the next session. And thanks very much also. Adit uh, are also told thanks. Thanks, everyone. And once again, and taking leave of you now.